In today's video, I show you the distal intersection syndrome on MRI. Before I show you some cases with a distal intersection syndrome, just have a look at the anatomy first here in this first case. At the level of the radiocarpal joint, you have the different extensor compartments. You have the first one here, second one here, the third one here, fourth one, fifth one and sixth one. So as I assume that you already know the names of these tendons, I'm not going to cover this here in this video because it's basically the basics. And when we talk about the distal intersection syndrome, this is this region here where the extensor pollicis longus tendon crosses the second extensor compartment, which consists of the extensor carpi radialis brevis and longus tendon. So this is the region where you're looking for in distal intersection syndromes. The proximal intersection syndrome is the crossing here between the second extensor compartment and the first extensor compartment. In a survey on my Patreon page, I asked my patrons what topics to cover and on March they voted for intersection syndromes of the wrist. So this is the first part of this um, series and I will also cover the proximal intersection syndrome in another video. And if you want to have a say as well on what topics to cover, make sure to check out my Patreon page. You can find the link here somewhere and also down in the description. And I do basically a monthly vote for all my patrons where they can give their input and make a poll on which topic to cover the next month. So this is a transverse T2 sequence and you can see fluid is hyper intense. And you are looking basically for fluid accumulation within the tendon sheath of the second and third extensor compartment and as a, as a sign of tenosynovitis of these two tendons or tendon sheaths rather. And so basically we have here this fluid around the extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor carpi radialis longus tendon here. You can also see this more distally where you have these fluid collections within the tendon sheath and be very careful. You basically see a little bit of fluid in almost every wrist MRI and don't overcall this as a distal intersection syndrome too easily. So basically you would need to have some changes as well in the third extensor compartment or even better if you can give contrast and you see that there is inflammation and, and enhancement then it increases your chances of being right calling that a intersection syndrome. So. A little bit of fluid, if you only have a little bit like this, I wouldn't call this intersection syndrome. It's just a normal amount of fluid you have in your tendon sheath. Now this is after gadolinium administration and you can see that you have marked tenosynovitis here in the third extensor compartment, reaching a little bit more proximally as well and also enhancement around the extensor carpi radialis brevis and longus tendons here also distally. So we have a distal intersection syndrome with tenosynovitis just at the intersection of the third and second extensor compartment. This is another example and here we have a fat saturated T2, a normal T2, these are Dixon technique and this is after gadolinium administration and basically let's have a look at the T2 fat set first. This is the proximal intersection between the first and second extensor compartment. Then here we have the extensor pollicis longus in the third extensor compartment. This is the listed tubercle and here it's starting to go to the radial side and here crossing the extensor carpi radialis brevis and longus tendon. And we can see we have some soft tissue edema around here and a little bit of fluid and it's not very striking. After administration of gadolinium you can see that you have enhancement here in the second extensor compartment and also around the tendon in the third extensor compartment here consistent with a distal intersection syndrome. Now just to mention if it's a chronic intersection syndrome the changes are going to be less prominent and you end up with having some little edema only and not too much fluid and the tendons might show tendinopathy. But uh, in an acute setting or more acute setting you typically have a lot of fluid and also a lot of enhancement. In this example again this is the second extensor compartment, this is the third extensor compartment, this is the Lister tubercle where the extensor pollicis longus tendon slings around and then crosses 
the second extensor compartment and you can see we have too much fluid here in the tendon sheath of all um, tendons here the ECRB, ECRL and EPL consistent with a distal intersection syndrome. This is a proton density or intermediate weighted sequence. This is a T1 before administration of gadolinium and this is after the gadolinium administration. And if we start here with the proton density weighted sequence, you can see there is a large amount of fluid here at the distal intersection here in the tendon sheath of all these tendons. And again, obviously, this is a intersection syndrome. And you can get this from overuse injuries most of the time when uh, there is an extensive use of either the wrist or uh, movement of the thumb where the extensor pollicis longus tendon repeatedly glides over this section here and causing some friction and eventually ending up in inflammation. And here in this case, there is a quite a lot of uh, enhancement and you have these little septations and stuff like that. So there is certainly uh, the differential diagnosis of a infection to keep in mind. This is after subtraction and you can see that there is a strong enhancement here at the distal intersection consistent with a intersection syndrome distally. The takeaways from this video are basically don't overcall distal intersection syndromes because a little bit of fluid in the second extensor compartment is a normal finding. And the second point would be keep it in your differential diagnosis anyways because it's not uh, always suspected by the referring physicians and you can make a good diagnosis if you see any changes there. And if the referring physician specifically asks for it, consider giving gadolinium and this makes it pretty easy if it's the case actually. That's it for today, thanks for watching and uh, if you liked the video hit the like button and also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time.